Kevin Pierce came out of nowhere taking the win there. Kevin Pierce, you're 17 years old, out here doing the slope style. You went up against some big competition today. Money. He's making like 100 G's or something like that. He caught his toe edge and just boom like that, like so fucking hard and no hands to cover his, no hands to cover his face. American snowboarder Kevin Pierce remains in critical but stable condition tonight after a training accident yesterday in Park City, Utah. Pierce was considered a favorite to make the U.S. Olympic team. It was just numbing, it was just that, you know, that boy who could do anything. You're wonderful father, your parents are wonderful in this film. They, your father though described you as the boy who could do anything. Tell us about that boy. I, I was successful and I was doing really well, you know, all around in my life. And, you know, first and foremost was my snowboarding and I was really successful at it and things were going really well. And You'd got to the point where you were rivaling. Uh, the 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 favorite uh, Olympian Sean White. That year before my injury, I'd kind of you know been going up against Sean, and I beat him a couple times, and we really kind of had this battle going back and forth, and it was cool because I was you know giving him a run for his money, and kind of the only kid that had really been beating Sean. So Sean got salty about it. He was all wasted like after the contest. Uh, it's a crazy feeling that you get from doing those tricks and being in the half pipe and just being in that in that world that I was in for so long and it was so normal and so natural to me and now looking back at it it's like whoa that was crazy that stuff I was doing but you know it was the most fun most wild stuff I could have ever imagined and it was so amazing to me that I was able to do that and I had so much fun doing it. Look at this. Style, amplitude, and technical perfection. I was very experienced and, you know, I was very talented at what I was doing, so it wasn't that risky for me. And I got really unlucky on this day, and kind of that's, you know, what the film leads up to. But then, you know, what's so cool about this is that it's a film, you know, so much more about than just me and the half pipe snowboarding. It's about what, you know, a family can do and how a family can help you overcome something. So me and Kevin do like a little rock, paper, scissors shoot. And Kevin lost, so he dropped in. So that day, I was trying these new tricks the called a cab double cork. And it's where you go into the pipe backwards and you come up the wall and you try and do two flips and two spins and come down facing forward. And I came down facing sideways. And that led to me striking my head to the bottom of the half pipe and pretty much just straight to the ice, my skull to the ice. and ended up leaving me in a coma and in the critical care for a month, so. He was just out. You know, he was blood coming out of his mouth, his nose. Kevin is just like shaking, like when you pull a fish out of water. So we all just started talking to him. Stay with us, Kevin, we're here, we're here, it's gonna be all right. He had to like put a tube down his throat so he could breathe because he wasn't breathing on his own. My brain was so injured and, you know, I think that's, you know, a huge, huge piece of this is to show people that, you know, if you do injure your brain or if you do injure something that you can recover from it and it can be healed if you do the right things and take the right steps. The thing about brain injuries, and I've interviewed many people who have experienced traumatic brain injuries over the years, is that once you make a kind of visible recovery, it's all still going on inside and people wouldn't know. They don't understand why you might be impulsive or might, why you might experience mood sp swings in public. They just think you've got a rotten personality. <laughs> they had, you were part of a really tight-knit group of friends. Um, friends is, in fact, what you called the group, F-R-E-N-D-S, uh, of guys who were doing the whole snowboarding circuit. How did they respond to your recovery? Yeah, you know, that's been a huge piece. And I haven't, you know, got to spread that message too much about the whole Friends crew and, you know, the snowboarding community. And I think it's a great, great representation of how amazing the snowboarding community is and how amazing my group of friends are because of what they've done for me and how they've been there to support me to recover from this. And 
kind of everything they've done, you know, from helping me, from not allowing me to drink and not letting me go out and making sure I do the right things every single day. It's just like they've been there and supported me 100%. People think of this snowboard community and this snowboard world as a bunch of, you competitive. know, competitive drunks out there partying. But really, it's a There's sp- a bit of that going on. There is you some of that. that. Yeah, no, there is some of that for sure. It's, it's a, you know, we have fun and we enjoy ourselves, but we're also smart. And so it's a, it's a very fine balance of partying and being smart and being safe. Mm. So well, there's both sides to it. As you started to kind of claw back yourself, the self, but it was a different self, you were determined to get back out there, weren't you? Absolutely determined. Yeah, I was. I was totally determined to get back on snow and, you know, to get back on my snowboard. And that was such a huge piece of this for me. And I think, you know, that's one reason that I continued to fight so hard and, you know, work every single day at getting better and healing my brain is so I could get back to doing what I really love. Yeah, you know, it's amazing to look back and see where I was and the kind of shape I was in. And that's why this film is so amazing for me is because I can see, you know, really what I went through and the conditions and shape I was in and, you know, then how my family had to deal with that and what I put them through. And it's so special for me to be able to watch this and see where I was just, you know, such a short time ago and how bad my brain really was and, you know, where it's had to come from. Okay, so we need to finalize our plans for the day that Kevin wants to get back on snow for the very first time in two years. Uh, Me and Adam talked about this earlier on. We said that 12th or 13th was going to work best. I don't want you to snow back in bed. You don't want that, Dave? Not bed. Not yet. Tell us about David, because he was he's one of your brothers. He was determined that you not get back out there, and he's he was probably more overt at expressing that than the rest of the family. Yeah, David is amazing. David's my brother. I have three older brothers, and David is, the, I'm the youngest, and David's just older than me, and he has Down syndrome, and he is the most special, most precious, amazing brother I could ever imagine. And, you know, it was so hard for him to see and have to deal with me getting back on snow just because of how much this has affected him along with the whole family. But it really hit Dave especially hard. And, you know, it's amazing for me to see in this film really how this affected him. David, he looks at pictures of you from when you first got hurt that he has on his computer and he watches videos. And I think he gets... Me and Dave, our family, as you'll see in the film, is very close and it's incredible. But I never had that relationship that I do now with Dave. And I think it's because of, you know, me injuring my brain and now how much harder and how much slower I do things every single day. And it's like that is what life is like for David. It's slow and it's hard and it's tedious. And it's like now he understands that I have the same struggles as him. And so he can kind of really relate to me on much more of the same level. So it's special. I might lose them. Um, I don't know what I'm... One of the things that's been totally key for you now is to well, involve yourself in a campaign. And this is your Love Your Brain campaign. Tell us about that campaign. Yeah, this has been cool, you know, because I've tried to take this accident and really kind of take something away from it. And, you know, Mm. I was doing so well in my snowboarding and it was so amazing. I was winning all these events and winning all this money and traveling around the world. And I was living this surreal life. You know, it was like show up in a country, win all this money and then fly to the next place and party and be with my best friends. And it was like it was almost a fake life I was living. And so now it's like I lost that life. What do I find out that I can get the same feeling from and, you know, really kind of be of an importance to this world that I'm living in? And, you know, I've I've started to do that with this new. Yeah, we call it the love your brain campaign just because, you know, loving your brain is so important. And we started it off and it's kind of in the beginning stages now, but we're selling T-shirts and I'm actually wearing one right now. It says love on it to love your brain. And then my dad is, uh, you'll see in the film, he blows handmade glass and he's selling um, these bowls called love your brain bowls that you can buy on my website, kevinpierce.com. And all the money from the bowls and the websites are going to Mm. help these families and these kids that have been, you know, affected by brain injuries or families that have kids with Down syndrome or anybody that's facing challenges in life right now, we're trying to help and support. 
What about the sport itself? Because this is a very potent message in the film. And we meet, we meet some key people. I think Sarah Burke is one of them, who was a, a very well-known um, performer, freestyle skier. We meet her in the film, commenting on your injury. Uh, and she dies in this film. We meet others who, uh, who aren't insured. They don't have any insurance. So sometimes they're left having to claw, find the money to uh, heal after massive injuries. And also, I guess what we see is your father, uh, Kevin, talking about the weight of responsibility he feels for allowing you to get caught up in that whole juggernaut of competitive snowboarding with the sponsorships and the hype, the pressure, huge pressure. There should be limits, I think, just like there is in car racing. And finally, they had to limit the size of the engines in the racing cars because people are killing themselves. And it's the same in the half pipe. If you make the walls higher, which makes it more dramatic for the spectators and the television and the media, the athlete will go. I mean, he'll push it to the limits. It's in the athlete's makeup. I felt that at some level, we, we were all to blame. What I hope people can get from this, you know, whether you're a parent, whether you're an athlete, whether you're just a spectator, you can learn how to help, you know, these kids become smart and become safe and, you know, do things in the right way. And, you know, whether it's getting the right insurance or, you know, snowboarding at your, you know, your right limits and your right abilities, just or being safe and putting a helmet on. I just hope that people will be able to learn from this film and really take away something. So they get up off their couch after watching the movie and be like, okay, I'm going to go out tomorrow. I'm going to get on the snow, but I'm going to put a helmet on and mm -hmm. I'm going to be smart out there. A helmet didn't protect your brain, though. No, a helmet saved my life. It saved your life. Yep. Okay. They said the doctors told me that if I didn't have a helmet on that day that I would have not made it. Would you do it all again? I would. I would never change a single thing that I did. I had such an amazing life and I'm so happy with everything. And I can say that very, very honestly, that it was, you know, so special and it's been a battle now. I mean, I continue to battle to this very day for the last three and a half years recovering from this. And it is such a struggle. And, you know, looking back at what I got to do, it just, it's all so worth it to me. You know, I think the hardest part of this is, you know, the issues I have with my memory and then along with that comes my vision, and then there's my balance, and then there's so many different things that I struggle with every single day, but it's getting better and my brain is still healing, so that's pretty cool. Congratulations on the film. It's an incredible film. Not a snowboarding film. You were very, <laughs> very firm on that as you walked into the studio this morning. I'm really grateful for you uh, coming into the studios today, and good luck with the screenings here in Australia this week. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I love you guys. It's an amazing <laughs> place.